So after the merger happened, you became the co-CEO of Island Def Jam. Right. And, and Mercury. And Mercury. Which, right. Mercury. Yeah. You were the first hip hop president of a major label in the history of yes. the world. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? How that big responsibility. You know, I was the rap guy. Mm -hmm. And I actually left Def Jam downtown uh, while I was shuttling back and forth just to demystify the fact that we weren't savages, that we actually um, had a plan and that we wanted to do great work, continue to do great work. And so finally, we all moved up to Worldwide Plaza and, you know, after the killers, I wasn't the rap guy anymore. So, <laughs> and some 41. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, in 2004, you left, you became chairman and CEO of Warner Music. Why that move? You know, why that move? That would take a long time to explain. But the fact of the matter is that I couldn't continue with Universal at the time. Mm. There is a there is a lot of politics happening all at the same time, and the gentleman that owned Universal that put the whole company together was Edgar Brofman mm -hmm. of the Seagram's family. Yeah, and he's the one that bought Polygram for $11 billion. And he was able to see the numbers that I was doing at Island Def Jam. And he recruited me to be one of the first people that took uh, Warner Music private mm. and bought it from Time Warner. Aha. AOL Time Warner. Okay. And it was during this era that you came up with 360 deals. Did you actually invent the 360 deal yourself? I wouldn't say I invented the 360 deal. Is that I was faced with Universal was the largest company. Sony was right behind them. And Warner was a distant three. And so I always want to ask myself, what is my signature? What's the competitive advantage of Warner? What is, when, when an artist signs to Warner, what did they think about? Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to be is the largest indie or the scrappiest major. And the one that was committed most to artist development. And the only way that you could commit to artist development is you have to shrink your roster. Mm. You have to shrink the number of releases. You know, instead of throwing releases against the wall and see what sticks, you actually have to believe in what you're signing, spend money to um, develop and, and promote and market those artists and stay with them because artists aren't supposed to break immediately. It's supposed to be a process. It's supposed to take some time. And the signature that I wanted to have is you could take your time breaking with me because I'm not going to run out the door because you don't have a hit or you're not posting up those numbers. Yeah. And so what I needed to do was because I was shrinking the roster and not having as many releases, I needed to make more from each release. So it was basically going to them and explaining to them, Hey, this is what I want to do. Are you with me? Do you want to roll with me? And it wasn't like I was like, you, you, everybody has the ability to sign a contract and to roll with whomever they want to roll with. I, to roll with me, I needed to have a more skin in the game. I mean, 360 deals have, you know, some people are okay with them. Some people have criticized them. And from what I understand, speaking to different managers in the music industry, when it comes to 360 deals, it's almost impossible for the label to collect on every show that an artist does. You know, especially at a certain level of artists. Now, Listen, but, that, but that's not the point. 
The point is that you and I are going to be partners. Mm. The point is, is that you and I are going to um, go through this whole journey together. By the way, a manager is a 360, right? Yeah, actually, you're right. Okay, so get a piece of everything. So, yeah, and they they're not putting up the any of the equity and right. the capital, or they true. don't have a big infrastructure. This is true. They have a mobile phone, and and you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and so, yeah. um, I figured because <laughs> number one, I have the capital, I have the uh, international uh, distribution, and people all over the world um, that. And, and, you know, you have to walk the walk. What I mean by that is you really have to reduce your roster. You really have to focus on, uh, you know, a smaller number of, of artists. So 360 doesn't work if that's all lip service. But 360 works if you're actually going to do the work and you're actually going to let an artist grow and develop and become something as opposed to just, you know, rolling for seven and 11s, you know, that wasn't what I wanted to do. 